What is going on you guys? Today, we are going to talk about what is management plane and how to secure it. There is two parts of this video. The first part will use the local database while the other will work with a radio server. But what is management plane? Remember the first time you get a new router or switch? You connect to it for a management using a management cable, a rollover cable, or a console cable. This one is what we use that connect from your computer to the console port of the router or the switch. And you know what? This is your first exposure to the concept of a management traffic. By configuring a username and password, you are taking the first step toward improving what is called the management plane on a device. Still don't get it, do you? Hmm. Let me put it this way. The management plane includes not only the configuration of the system, but also who may access it and what they are allowed to do while they are logged in. The management plane also includes messages to or from a device that is used to maintain or report the current status of the device. In other words, these are the components that are used to manage the router, the switch, and other devices that are compliant with the standard protocol, such as SNMP, Telnet, SSH, Netcom, and others. But if you're gonna look at it, this is quite related to what we call AAA, which stands for Authentication, Authorization, and Accounting. Authentication identify who is permitted to use through network resources, what they are authorized to do using authorization, and capture the action performed while accessing the network through accounting. Are you truly confused? Don't worry, it's not really that tough to go and actually use these things. So let's go to our laboratory. I have here a collapsed campus topology model that have at least two core routers, two layer 2 access devices, tiny core Linux, and a sent OS radio server that we're gonna use on our part 2. I also use a network address of 192.168.1.0 to our VLAN 1 and assign them some IP addresses. Let's start by accessing the access one and configure a privilege password. As of now, we are in the user exec mode. And there are limited commands that you can type here. If you want to configure the device such as configuring routing, changing the IP address, creating VLANs, you need to go to the privilege mode. But of course, the router should ask you the password first. If you're gonna go to the privilege mode, especially level 15. Because if you type enable, you will be the root user or the administrator of this device. There are different kind of way for you to configure the privilege password. So let's go to the global config to do that. Let's type enable password pass. Okay, to test this one and and then disable. Again, this is the user exec mode. Now, if you want to go to the privilege mode, which is level 15, we just need to type enable. Okay? Now, it's asking as a password, which is the password is pass. The only problem with this one, if I type show, run, pipe, section, ena, you can still see the password here since this is using a type 0 level password, which is plain text. One of the solution for this one is for us to configure service password encryption. So we need to type configure terminal again. And then type end. And then again type that. Now it's a type 7 and it's already encrypted. The only problem again is there is an easy solution to decrypt this password. You just need to go to the Google, decrypt, level 7, password. Here we go. Just need to copy this one. Paste it here. So as you can see, the password is pass. The type 7 still is unsecure. But the real reason why do they create this one is to provide the protection against someone looking over a config to obscure the real password. That's why they usually call this one encryption light. Instead of using the enabled password which is type 0 and plain text and make it type 7 encryption light, 
it is much better for us to use other privileged password such as enable secret and this one will use the md5 hashing algorithm to do that let's go back to our console i just need to type config t okay and then type n and check it now it's already type 5 which is uses the md5 algorithm this will be hard to decrypt because md5 hashing is a one-way function there are other level type that you can use and here is a simple table still remember type 0 it will use the plain text type 4 uses the SHA-256. Type 5 is MD5 hashing, while Type 7 is Beginner Cipher or Encryption Light. Type 8 is PBKDF2 and SHA-256. And the best practice type password to use as of now, dun -dun -dun -dun, Type 9 Cipher Hashing Algorithm. To do that, let's go back to our console. Disable first the Enable Secret. And type enable algorithm type script secret pass. Let's see that. So there you go. Take note. You need to make sure you use a complex password and the right password type. Because this will be used to restrict access to the privilege level and the global configuration mode of our devices. And that is authentication. How about authorization? Do you know that there are different kind of privilege level that you can do accessing our devices? We usually type enable and by default, it will access the level 15. And that is the highest privilege that you can give to our admin. To check that, let's go back to our console. Let's type show privilege. As you can see, I'm already in the level 15 since I already typed enable earlier. If we type disable and type show privilege again, we are back to our user exec mode and there are limited commands that you can configure here because by default, it is using level 1. So what are the other privilege level that we can access? We have 16 privilege level which is 0 to 15. So is it possible for us to access level 5? Enable you can pick a number here let's type 5 no it won't work since there is no password that is set on our level 5 and the only privilege level that who can create a password on level 5 is level 15 now let's set a password so enable if i press enter that will be level 15 if i type 15 still again it will be go to level 15 and then the password still remember pass okay so config t so I'll just type here, enable, secret, level 5, pass 5. So we already set a password on our level 5. So to test that, type N, and then disable, and then enable, 5, pass 5. Let's type show prib. Let's type configure terminal. As you can see, it doesn't work. The privilege level 5 and the privilege level 15 will not have the same command set since 15 still is the highest user. If you want to give some configuration command on level 5, that will work but you need to do it one by one at level 15. So let's configure that. Back to our level 15. Privilege. Guys, if I'm gonna type exec here, means this command will work at the privilege mode. So if I type level 5, of course, if you want to go to the global config from the privilege mode, you need to type configure terminal. I want this level 5 to go to different kind of interfaces that we have. So you need to type privilege, configure, it means in the global config, level 5 interface okay now once you're in the interface i want you to change the ip address so privilege interface level 5 ip address before we test it let me show you this one 
in the user exec or privilege level 1 ping 192.168.1.1 as you can see it is working as of now I will also give the ping capability on my level 5 config t privilege exec level 5 ping then type there ping now it's not working anymore since i assigned the ping to the level 5 the level 0 to 4 cannot do ping anymore every command that i gave to level 5 or privilege level 5 can also be inherited by the higher privilege like 6 to 15. to check that let's press question mark so guys as you can see ping cannot be seen here and these are the only command that you can do as of now on the privilege level 1. Now, let's test the privilege level 5. Enable 5. Pass 5. Okay. So, if you still remember, I can type configure terminal. Okay. And then interface VLAN 1. I can set the IP address by typing IP address 192.168.1.201 255 That's 0. But, if I type no shutdown, still remember, I didn't give the no shutdown command on privilege level 5 so that he cannot activate the interface. If you really want him or if you want the privilege level 5 to type no shutdown, you also need to give the permission by using the privilege level 15. So as you can see, the command are still limited. So if I type exit, question mark again, still few commands can be typed here. This is one of the first things Cisco created for authorization accessing our devices. But as of now, no one work with this anymore because it's hard to use and maintain since you need to assign a command for each and every privilege level that you have. The out-of-band config or using a blue rollover cable directly connected to the console port is fairly safe. Unfortunately, it is not very convenient to use or to require a console port when you are trying to manage several devices that are located in different buildings or on different floors of the same building. A common solution for this problem is to configure the device with an IP address or also what they call in-band config that you can then use to connect to that device remotely. It is at this moment that the security risk goes up. Because you are connecting over IP, it might be possible for an authorized person to also connect remotely. The management plane, if it were secure, would enable to control who may connect to the management box, when they may connect, what they may do, and report on anything that they did. To configure an out-of-band access using a console cable, we need to put a password on our line console and line auxiliary. So guys, let's open our console again. Let's type ENT. And then disable because if I'm not mistaken, that is still privilege level 5. Enable 15. Pass. Config T. Line console 0. Password pass con or for console. And then login to take effect. Exit. Line auxiliary 0. Password pass aux. Login. In our inbound config, since our admin will use Telnet or SSH, we need to enable it on the line BTY port. So line BTY 014. So let me check that. BTY 02. So the maximum as of now is 4. No problem with that. Password pass BTY. Log in. Then end. So to test that, we can type here disable. And then, let's type exit for total logout. Now, it's asking me a password, which is still remember the password, which is pass con. Okay, since we access it using a console cable or a console port. Now, to test our line BTY, let's check the interface first. So, IP interpret. It's okay. So, the IP address is 192.168.1.201. Let's open our TinyCore Linux. Let me check the IP address first. Let's go to the control panel. And then network. It doesn't have any IP address yet. So 192.168.1.250 based on our topology. So the gateway will be the 101. 101. Okay. Then click apply. Now let's open a terminal. Let's try to use the in-band by typing telnet. 
So it's asking a password. Still remember the password? Pass BTY. So there you go. Enable pass for our privilege level 15. Putting a password in in-ban and out-of-ban is good, but it is more convenient for us to create an account for each and every admin that we have so that they can have their own username and password. Let's configure that. So let's type config again. Triple A new dash model, which stands for authentication, authorization, and accounting. Username. As of now, I'll create admin, password, um, Cisco123. And another account, username, Ryban, password, Cisco123. Okay? We still need to use the username and password come from our local database. So to do that, triple A authentication, login, default, local. This command tells us that once you log in on auxiliary, BTY, or console, it will use the local database of this device. Let's press enter to that. Now before we test it, let's press right click this one, click start capture. I'm gonna use Wireshark for this one. So let's go to Tiny Core Linux again. Okay. And then let's open a terminal. Telnet 192.168.1.201. Enter. It's asking me a username, which is I'm gonna use Ryban. And then a password of Cisco. 123. Enable. And then pass. So now we can still configure using an in band configuration. Now let's go to our Warshark which is a packet snipper. Still remember, I enabled the packet snipper in this interface. Okay. So in filter, let's type telnet. Still remember the protocol that we use. Right click and then follow TCP stream. Here, you will see the Ryban username and the password which is Cisco123 pass and configure terminal. At this time, you want to ensure that all the packets that go between the device being managed by the administrator is encrypted so that anyone who potentially may capture the individual packet while going through the network could not interpret the content of the packet, which might contain sensitive information about the configuration or password used for access. I strongly recommend for you to use SSH instead of using Telnet. Best Practice and Keynotes Have a strong password. Consider the length and make sure it's an alphanumeric character. Create a passphrase, not a password. Enable the user authentication and AAA. Configure role-based access control. Encrypt management protocol so instead of using Telnet and HTTP, use HTTPS and SSH. Enable the NTP. Secure the system file and you need to have an accounting. But you need to have a server for that such as TACAX and Regius since the local database cannot handle it. For the recap, we talk about management plane and how to secure it using different type of password level, privilege level from 0 to 15, inbound and outbound access, and a few part about AAA since we are going to highlight it on part 2 using the radio server. So I hope I've been informative to each and every one of you. Thank you for watching this. See you on part 2.